so the interesting thing is we know a lot about the sleep problems that happen to children and their carers if the children have seizures and actually um, if they have seizures at night time or during the day it does rock sleep but it particularly rocks sleep if it happens at night time and it's really not surprising because you know the the, the, the fragile trying to get a child to, to settle at night um, the site of the very first seizure, we, we know from most parents that the first thought is, is the child going to die at that time? And it completely changes the confidence with which you would kind of leave the room and do all the stuff that many parents have done with their other children, had the confidence to leave them to settle on their own. So just from the perspective of the kind of links between the parent's behaviour and the child's behaviour, that changes. And unfortunately, in, um, in an epilepsy that's as severe and difficult to treat as Dravet's, it's unlikely the seizures will stop for quite a long time. So, so that completely changes that, that, that background. And then the dilemmas are, okay, so is the child going to be safer if they're in the same room as us, or do we co-sleep with them? And that, that then rocks the whole family dynamics. exclude serious conditions, what we call comorbidities, that might be happening alongside. So whilst the focus might be on the seizures or the poor sleep, does the child have um, sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea? So this is a condition that people are familiar with, um, maybe adults who are overweight, have pauses in their breathing overnight. We know it happens a lot more often in children with epilepsy than in the general population for a variety of reasons. And we know in a recent study um, of children with Dravet syndrome, like more than three quarters of them, um, when oxygen levels were measured, had low levels and might be having episodes of obstructive sleep apnea during the night. And what happens is that sends a signal to the brain that oxygen levels are low and the child might wake up with a snort or a gasp and then start breathing again normally. But the sleep has been fragmented. And as we've said before, what we want to do is anything we can to consolidate sleep and stop that fragmentation, which is a very point from which a seizure might emerge. So I guess I'm saying we mustn't forget the basics and check out for any other sleep disorders that we might be able to treat in different ways. And there are different ways of treating um, sleep apnea. So I think um, particularly children with drive syndrome and any child that might have a vagal nerve stimulator, which actually increases the risk of obstructive sleep apnea, I think we should be routinely doing a proper um, sleep study on them. And we can do them in people's homes now. We, we do our best not to drag children and parents into hospitals and unfamiliar environment. Many of these studies can be done in the home environment in, in an ambulatory way. Anticonvulsants are anti-epileptic drugs. They're important. They can fragment sleep a little bit themselves. They can affect learning and behavior, but in Dravet syndrome in particular, you sometimes don't have a choice and the child might need three different anti-epileptic drugs just to control seizures. And so there's less flexibility, but I would say we do know that some of the anti-epileptic um, drugs are slightly better for sleep and some are slightly worse for sleep. So to kind of bear that in mind as well. In other words, to work with the epileptologist about the sleep problems. Um, the sleep medicine we have the most evidence about um, is melatonin. And in fact, a lot of work's been done um, on groups of children who do have neurodevelopmental problems like autism. And sometimes that have quite similar sleep fragmentation to children with Dravet's, many of whom have autism as well. So um, there is quite, ev quite good evidence. And in fact, a new preparation that's been licensed just for, for children as well um, in a very... Um, child-friendly manner. It's a tiny, tiny size of a hundred, hundreds and thousands and can be put in yogurt or apple sauce, which is important for children who have diff difficulty, wouldn't be able to take a pill or a tablet for a variety of reasons. Um, so that's just a little bit on, on, um, on medicines that I would think about. And then, you know, there are other interesting avenues we're working on, um, which are somewhere between science fiction or kind of great research of the future where we're actually trying to hack sleep and we're trying to say can we 
actually alter the amount of time in different sleep stages by a variety of different means in a way that sleep would be more stable and maybe, and we don't know yet, maybe we'd get less, um, less seizures as a result of that consolidated sleep. Mm -hmm.